Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know this is the last session of the day prior to the closing, so um, we're ending it on a fun note, uh, dealing with uh, tourism and leisure uh, in the digital era. And it's a pleasure to be here in the world capital of tourism in Paris. And so um, I'm happy to be joined by our distinguished panelists uh, to help us talk through the uh, not only the tourism sector, but also how digitization can help not only in enhancing guest experience, but also trying to find ways in um, moving it in a new direction and facilitating things for everyone. Um, I'll, I'll start off with uh, Bridget Woods uh, from NEOM um, to learn a bit more uh, about um, how you know the collaboration and the collaborative projects of NEOM uh, and what you're doing with global tech uh, and not only in enhancing guest experiences, but also in sustainability. So we're really excited to be able to work in a destination in NEOM that is being built from the ground up. So if any of you have had the opportunity to go to NEOM, you'll see them, the massive amount of construction that's happening there. But from a tourism perspective, um, it provides a green, field, a green slate for us, um, a clean slate for us, I should say. And we're really capitalising on that with the way we're building out our digital ecosystem. So we're partnering with a lot of international global firms that are specialists in um, delivering personalisation and AI is a big part of how we will deliver um, seamless experience for travellers when they come to, to NEOM in the future. So that interception point, but it, we really must um, stress that AI doesn't replace those one-on-one -on -one human interactions, which are also really important, and that's what travellers are, many travellers are still looking for. So our digital ecosystem is capitalising and really looking at what, where that sweet spot is between AI on one side and human interaction on another side. And um, where, we, where we see the advantage is being able to deliver personalised experiences for each traveller that comes into NEOM based on what the reason why they're travelling, the time of year, who they're travelling with, and um, offering them the right experience at the right time to, um, in order to capitalise on the financial contributions that they'll make to the project moving forward. So we're, we're excited by that, and also from a sustainability perspective, we're developing what we call our impact calculator. So we will look at um, measuring the environmental, the social and the economic impact of every experience that's delivered in NEOM. So so travellers will be well informed um, about how they, um, what their impact um, to NEOM is when they're on their, on their holiday. So we're also excited about that because we know people really want to do the right thing when they're travelling, but we need to provide them with the information that guides them to and nudges them to make the right choices when it comes to their travel experiences in NEOM. Can you just tell everyone here, I mean, NEOM is not open for tourists right now. So if you can just also let them know where, what yeah. stage it's at. Yeah, we're, we're obviously the one of the world's, well, the world's most ambitious project right now. And we are in full steam construction mode. I live on site. I've been there for five years. And every day I, I see the, the progress that the, the, the project is making. And before we could even start construction, we had to build roads. We had to put water infrastructure in. We had to put electricity infrastructure in. And all that had to be in place. And for, for our workers, we now have 140,000 construction workers on site. We're just under 5,000 people working on the project um, from over 103 different nationalities. So we're not yet open for, for travellers, but our first product we'll launch uh, with this, uh, this year, late this year, is Sandala Island, a, a beautiful um, luxury island in the Red Sea, um, which I hope you will all come, come and visit us and, and just experience the, the, the beauty of this region in the, the northwest of Saudi Arabia. From the technological side, Daniel, can you tell us like, what are the biggest challenges in implementing AI uh, in customer service within this the tourism or hospitality industry specific. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tourism and hospitality are really two different things uh, because tourism uh, can be made with kind of a uh, logic. I, I need the night nunnery around that harbor, port, city, etc. It can be approximative. Okay, hospitality cannot be that way. It's black or white. When you, uh, when you are looking for information about an hotel, you need the price of the breakfast. The price of the breakfast is 20 euros, it's 30 euros, it's not 25. You see what I mean? That means today, the real uh, problem regarding AI is not the AI, okay? Because the battle for AI regarding the exponential improvement of AI, the problem with AI is over. The battle is over, the party is over, thank you, good night, sweet dreams, okay? Uh, where's the problem? The problem is the battlefield is another way. The battlefield is the data. Uh, for an hotel, a data is between 
2,000 and 3,000 data points. That means we need to know approximately around 2,000 and 3,000 information to be able to make a decent AI, okay? Believe me or not, 60%, I said 60% of the information is not digitalized, it's not formalized. It doesn't exist nowhere except in the brain of the people. I'm gonna give you a very simple example. Uh, we are working with very big hotel, the, the Sofitel in, uh, in Dubai. The Sofitel in Dubai, it's seven restaurants. Seven restaurants means seven dress code. Multiply by two, dress code for men, dress code for women, 14 dress code. Do you really think that there is one person in the hotel who knows the 14 dress code of the restaurant? Obviously, no one. What does it mean? It means you have to ask to every single restaurant what is the dress code for men and women, and you have to wish to find someone to answer you. That means the information will never exist. That's why we are collecting this information on top. We are making interviews with the people to try to gather a maximum of information to put that in the database. Database, data bank, data warehouse, you name it, okay? But this is the basic of the basic. If you want to have AI, specifically in hospitality, you need to create first a database, okay? That's the real big issue. We are working with big companies all over the world, specifically in the Emirates, and uh, this is our first goal. And by the way, this is not the only problem. And after, you have to update the information, okay? The price are changing, the surface are changing, everything is changing in the hotel. Then you need also, once you have done the database, to update that database. That means for the hotel staff, it has to be very easy, okay? And believe me, it's not so easy. <laughs> Thanks. And between the two, between hardware and, well, location and software, what are the best practices in the industry, pierre that you think, you know, demonstrate how to bring forward a location or a destination? That's a very good question. Uh, I think uh, all of you remember uh, a very critical period uh, three years ago, the COVID period. Uh, what I, why I'm talking about it? Because to me, this period was very interesting to observe, especially in terms of digital activities, uh, because in fact, everything else was, was closed. So everyone was very, very connected. Um, and why I'm talking about that? Because if you remember the amount of webinars, the amount of digital events uh, that was proposed at the time, but who remembers today about it? Is, is those events are still existing or not? They're not. They're just dead at the end of the COVID. Uh, my point uh, to say that is just to highlight the fact that digital must be an asset to help us to reach our different targets and not being like a technology for technologies. As you said, uh, the information is, is not digitally listed. The information are everywhere. Uh, so uh, the, 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 I think, in my opinion and on my company DNA, we are always approaching the, the, the digital aspect and we are doing some, some marketing campaign on digital platform and on social media, so we know how to use it. But we always try uh, to focus first our effort uh, and to focus the very beginning of our thought and our strategy on a real and proper experience and event. Um, for example, uh, let me tell you a, a story that I've bring uh, Opscotch as a success as it is today. Uh, almost 50 years ago, the mayor of Deauville was asking uh, to one of our founder, how could he kept uh, his uh, American tourism uh, some more weeks during the summer period in his city? That was the initial brief. And at that time, 50 years ago, we were not talking about digital experience, but we are talking about tourism um, because he observed that the American tourism was coming to Deauville from mid of July to mid of August, and he wanted to keep them like two, three more a week uh, to, to increase the business uh, over this period. Uh, and the answer was not like a PR campaign or publicity advertising for that time, but it was to create the first American film festival in Deauville. And today, uh, this festival 
is recognized as the second biggest film festival in France. It's very well known, so today for sure we are using the marketing campaign uh, to talk about it, to talk, to promote the different movie that we are forecasting it and we are showing it during the festival every year. So the, 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 the digital, uh, the, the different digital platform are more some tools that we are using, but coming from a proper experience, coming from the real life. So we, I think, uh, the, to answer to your question, and sorry for my long answer, uh, uh, is the best practice is, is to take some real content uh, to supply uh, the different uh, communication channels, such as uh, the, the social uh, network, for example. So a cultural experience, giving people advantage of a cultural experience. So, and, and Bridget, like for Neom, so like people want to come and travel. Now, you were talking about COVID, where people couldn't travel. Now people want to travel, um, and they want to experience different cultures. In Neom, you know, how are you helping give that cultural experience, the heritage of the region, you know, for tourists who are coming to visit? We're really excited to share the, the deep, rich history in which Neom, um, the lands of Neom are, are being developed and built on. The Arabian culture is, I think, to many people still, um, still mysterious. And um, in Neom, because we are building for the new future, Neom means new future, um, we are taking, we're, we're rooting all of our our service culture for our industry and the experiences we have in Neom are rooted in the history of what the, the kingdom has to offer in the Arabian culture. But we're also mindful that the project is about an accelerator of human progress. So really we're anchoring our service culture and our experiences on the history of, of the beautiful rich history of Saudi Arabia, but bringing that new age to the way that we deliver, we will be delivering the experiences in Neom. And technology is one of those components in, in how we're enhancing the experiences. And our chairman um, is very very, very focused on ensuring that when we deliver experiences in Neom, that they need to be different and um, have a point of difference to how experiences are delivered in the rest of the rest of the kingdom. So we're excited to be able to use to use technology to enhance the experiences, but also equally, um, travellers will also make their choice as to whether they want to engage with the, with that seamless technology that will be available to them. But some may choose just to um, enjoy the the nature on its own um, and just take in the beauty by um, putting their phones away. Um, I think many of us like that opportunity opportunity to switch off if we can. Um, and our, certainly our nature region provides that opportunity to, to really take in the awe and um, the beauty and the, the breathtaking views and scenery and natural access that we have in, in Neom. So I think, again, getting that balance right between when you use and engage with technology and then when you switch it off um, is, is really important. And that's certainly a way that we'll be looking to ensure that um, all of our service staff are trained with a common way of delivering service in Neom that's rooted in the Arabian um, culture, but also delivering on the promise of um, accelerating human progress. Uh, speaking of Arabian culture, you, you Pierre, you've been involved with uh, events that are related to Saudi Arabia and other Arab countries. Can you tell us a bit more about, about those? Uh, yeah, and, and one of those is, is directly linked to our topic about tourism. Uh, we, we had the chance to support the Royal Commission of Riyadh City uh, to, to win the candidacy for the uh, Expo 2030, as you know. Um, and I can insist of my first thought, uh, because the strategy that we implemented for the Royal Commission at that time was, okay, um, we have uh, 182 people to convince to vote for us, and we here are in Paris. Here in Paris, yeah, it was in Paris, yeah, because the BIE, the Bureau International Expo, is a French association based in Paris. Um, and the main strategy we had at that time, and validated uh, by, the, by the Royal Commission, uh, was to create uh, some milestone event in terms of lobbying, but not only lobbying for lobbying, but to forecast uh, Saudi Arabia, to, to show Saudi Arabia, and to, to make people feel that Saudi Arabia was really the right country to host the biggest cultural event in the world, and the biggest event in the world in general. Uh, and that was very important because, once again, you can promote in a digital content uh, context, sorry, um, like the line, Neom, uh, is, is well promoted uh, digitally. Uh, I think all of you have saw some, some videos, some picture of the line uh, on Instagram or X or whatever platform um, everyone have done. But today, what's your feeling about the line? You don't know, because it still doesn't exist, so you cannot experiment it. 
uh, what we've done uh, for, for the expo. So we have created this event for people to, to really feel uh, the, the Saudi DNA, the Saudi culture, the welcoming culture, because when you want to, to, to get the expo, it's about welcoming the world. Uh, so that was very important for the people to, to, to get this feeling. And for sure, uh, in parallel of that, uh, we were using a lot the social media uh, to promote our different action and our, our different content. But those core people, uh, those delegates that we need to convince, uh, thanks to that experience, they, they had the, the opportunity uh, to discover this culture, this welcoming culture that exists in GCC and especially in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and I think it was an important part of the strategy uh, to, to win that, uh, that bit. So once again, uh, I'd like to insist on the fact that uh, new technologies and, and digital are not only because it's very important, but are tools to obtain a result and to reach some target that you want. And so speaking of these technological tools, how hard is it to convince hospitality industry to, to adopt these type of tools? Yeah. Because you said that people, I mean, a lot of the data is not available or it needs to be digitized. How, you know, how do you convince them to actually take that extra step and update and... Mm, the, the easiest way is a gun, you see what I mean, okay? Uh, otherwise, they don't listen to you, okay? Then, but uh, the best way is that we are already working with so many hotels in the world that we can prove that it really helped the hotel to take decision. Uh, I'm gonna give you two examples because examples are better than any long speech. Um, we are working with uh, hotels in Montreal. It's a skyscraper, obviously skyscraper like that, not like that. Um, and the number seven question that was asked to this specific hotel was, do you have twin rooms? Do you have twin rooms? Do you have twin rooms? And specifically, in all the other hotels in the world, this question doesn't really exist. And we discovered that this hotel has only double rooms. And people were looking for twin rooms. We told that to the hotel. Do you know that people are looking for twin rooms? And they have decided to turn two floors into twin rooms uh, beds, in fact, twin beds rooms. Okay, that's the first example. The second example, and it's totally crazy. We have 300 hotels in Paris. We can gather the information from all the hotels, all the questions. The number one question people ask from all over the world when they're trying to book an hotel in Paris is, I need to book a room. Simple logic. Can you imagine what is the question number two? I give 10,000 euros to someone who can give me the answer. Anyone? Ah, they're really interested. Huh? Yeah, you uh, see? Yeah. I never lose. I never lose. <laughs> you can go. I'm going to tell you. People who are traveling from all over the world coming to Paris, the question number two is, do you have a spa? Oh, okay. Can you believe that? Do you have a spa? Then, I'm talking to all my clients in Paris, if you have a cave, okay, with wine, or I don't know what, okay, build a spa. Because people are going to choose your hotel because there is a spa, okay? You know, it's like the gym in the hotel. Everybody's looking for the gym in the hotel, but as no you can one see, uses it. there is no one in the gym, okay? But the spa is full. Believe me that. Then, what I want to tell you that way, in a very funny way, is thanks to AI, we are going to generate data, and more than this, we are going to an analyze the data to make a bird, to create better services. And it works for a property, it works for a group, it works for a region, it works for a category, it works for everything. Because as, as long as we have the data, we can do everything with the data. Then, what is important? Data at the beginning, data at the end. Bridget, uh, does your hotel have a spa? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Sandala has a beautiful spa. <laughs> but you, Neom didn't need convincing to go into technology and, and you know, and digital, digital tools because it's, like you said, it's a very fast, you know, forward thinking. So, you know, how have you been utilizing it? Yeah, prior that, to the actual opening, sorry. Yeah, that's a, it's a great question because everyone talks about digital transformation and in NEOM, we're not transforming, we are starting, that is our base and from the base we have to go, we have to go higher and um, so when we work with partners, it's always, um, it takes them a little while <clears throat> to get their head around that, that fact because they're 
<coughs> excuse me, trying to transform something, and we're saying, no, no, we're not transforming. We're starting from scratch from a, from a basis of, well, technology is just a given in, in the world that we work in in NEOM. Um, but in, importantly, we have to get the basics right first. So and we don't do technology for technology's sake. We're always looking at what is the problem we're trying to solve and making sure that we're finding solutions that is solving that problem that is big. Like for us, when we did research, when we're developing the app, that um, for one of the things that we learned when you're coming to a new destination, it's really difficult to research and find information about destinations. And you're looking at multiple websites, multiple apps. Um, and then if you've got a a hotel, but you want a, a restaurant, how far is that location between two? How much travel time do I need to allow? Do I need to think about um, uh, the the traffic conditions when I'm planning what my, my route and my itinerary will be um, when I'm traveling to a new destination? So for us, making travel booking and itinerary planning easy was where we started when we looked to develop our in-destination and our planning tools for NEOM. So the, the Discover NEOM app, um, it will, will solve those problems for travellers and each traveller will have their own AI tool um, or assistant, we call it, your own personal assistant, um, who um, we're working with a company called Arena AI who are specialists in um, human behaviour AI. So when they, when you ask a question, when, if I ask a question about my travel to Neon, the response from uh, my assistant will be different to if um, somebody else asks the same question. So if Daniel asked the question, his response would be different because the AI tool is understanding how I'm, or monitoring how I'm interacting with different elements of the of the app? Am I looking at experiences that are focused on adventure or am I more looking at soft adventure, cultural experiences? So am I traveling with my family or am I traveling with my friends or am I traveling for business? Because again, the responses would be different in what I'm looking to plan. So for us, we're looking at the use of synthetic tourists as well. So understanding and building um, synthetic tourists so we can model what the behavior of people may be when they come into NEOM so that we can make sure we have the right experiences for all of the future travellers into NEOM. So um, the whole notion of synthetic tourists took me a little while to get my head around, but um, once I started interacting with the tools around synthetic tourists, um, that really has become a really important tool for us from a destination management perspective to ensure that we've got the right um, operators and the right third-party providers um, in our ecosystem that will deliver those um, experiences uh, in the way that our guests, our future guests into NEOM are looking for. Thank you. Pierrick, and, and linking the strong link between, you know, experiences and tourism and digital. Can you tell us a bit more about, you know, what you think? Uh, I think uh, today in this digital era, something has changed drastically is about uh, the nature of uh, the customer. Because before, and especially if I'm talking about uh, my own field, the communication, uh, before uh, our target and the customer was passive target when you were using like uh, traditional advertising on TV on the street you were passive like you were just receiving the information no more but now today because of the digital because of the social media you can interact with the brand that changed everything when you're talking about experience that's the very beginning of the experience that a customer is having with the brand through the digital before to visit Neon everyone will go on the digital platform to promote it. And then maybe they will come. But first, first they will start experimenting it through the digital. So that changed a lot uh, because for the different comp companies who are advertising through the digital platform, they have to think in a different way because you can receive direct and immediate feedback from your customer. So that is an opportunity, but uh, that is also uh, um, something very dangerous that the company has to control. Uh, and it's, it really changed the face of the business. If you look at, for example, uh, what happened uh, with uh, Volkswagen a few years ago with the diesel gate, you remember? Uh, before, like 50 years ago, the value of a company was based on its physical and financial assets, no more. But today, the relationship that you have with your different target with your different audience is also part of your value. Uh, so if I take this example of Volkswagen, I don't know if you remember this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this, um, this scandal that happened, uh, it's like the lie about the percentage of CO2 of the engine of their car. Uh, but in fact, like Volkswagen at that time was 
still producing the same amount of care per day. They were still having the same amount of money into their bank account. So the, the company itself was the same. It's just because uh, they lie to their customer. The value of, of the public market uh, decreased of half of the price in two days just because of a lie. So it, it, it showed that now today, the customer in terms of experience and especially uh, into the digital activity, they have this strong power on the companies. Uh, so when you go on the digital, it's not only about forecasting some content, some nice image, but it's starting the relation with your customer. And, and that's uh, something very, very important. And I think we are only at the very, very beginning uh, about uh, this approach, uh, which is, to me, the major change of this digital era. The transformation. So, uh, Daniel, the transformation in, in customer service and operational efficiency through AI uh, in the hospitality industry. You mentioned that you know, you, you, you're getting immense data how is this being translated into the day-to-day -day for the hotels and their operations? Is it helping them? Is it hindering them? Uh, are they happy to hear about it? Are they, do they don't want to know, like, you know, we use that many towels and, you know, yeah. et cetera, et cetera? Um, let's talk first about fantasy. What is fantasy? Fantasy is thinking that the AI can follow the client for life. It's not possible for legal reason, GDPR. Okay, that means after a couple of, maybe let's say one year, we have to delete all the data about the client. That means if the client's coming back one year later, he has to start from scratch, okay? For different reasons, but mainly it's legal. That's the point number one. Point number two, the AI can follow the client from before the booking, before the stay, during the stay, and after the stay, okay? Because it can reach that AI on his mobile phone, by Facebook Messenger, by WhatsApp. He can reach the AI on the website. Uh, he can reach the AI on the application of the hotel. That means the AI is everywhere. Very soon, the AI will be also in the TV when you're entering the room. The AI will be there. You can ask the AI what you want, etc., etc., etc. But what is important at that stage is when someone is interacting with the AI, it generates data. That the first data is going to generate is going to generate data for the CRM, consumer relationship management. That means to create value, to create more booking, etc. Okay, very simple to understand that. But we are going to generate new kind of data also because imagine the client needs need to book a taxi. The client has an air conditioning problem. The client need to book the restaurant, etc. All this interaction with the AI will generate task. Okay, task, and there is a dashboard with all the tasks the client asks for. Based on that, believe me, you have a very good profile about who is the client. A very good one. Obviously, I'm going to give you a very simple example because an example is better than a long speech. Um, we have the Russian client. She asked Velma, Velma is the name of her avatar. She asked Velma for an hotel in Courchevel, or Courchevel in the French Alps, okay? Only one single question. Do you have a bottle warmer? What, you know what is a bottle warmer? Okay. Velma answered, yes, we have bottle warmers. Just after she booked a room for, believe me, 30,000 euros. Just one question. That girl, she was going in a very fancy hotel in Courchevel with spa, <laughs> ski, restaurant, sports, you name it. And the, on, she was on, the only concern was, do you have a 15 euros bottle warmer? <laughs> okay, what does it mean? It means, first of all, you need the information, okay? But if the person asks for a bottle warmer, that means she's coming with a baby, okay? Simple logic. All this information is updated, uploaded into the system, okay? But only for one year. GDPR is around the corner. Never forget that, okay? By the way, GDPR is not a law. GDPR is kind of federal logic. GDPR, believe me, is not the same in Germany and in Italy, okay? If you see what I mean, German clients, the German hotels are really strict about GDPR in Italy. It's like that, huh? okay? Then, but GDPR has to be respected for every single client, European client all over the world. 
That means even for hotels in, um, in the Emirates or in the Gulf, they have to respect the GDPR because the, our clients are mainly Europeans. So you're expecting, Bridget, sorry, you're expecting a lot of different clientele to come to Niyam. How do you cater to these? I mean, some cultures are more, you know, uh, accepting of having their information, whether it be facial recognition, whether it be other things. Um, how, how do you cater for that different type of clientele, whether it be European or others? So the, there are uh, basic requirements, I think, when going to any country. I think many of us now are getting used to um, facial recognition and many airports have already implemented that. Abu Dhabi, um, Dubai, when we, we go through there, it's, it's a lot of facial recognition. So I think, um, and I think if it replaces ease and, 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 and makes things more convenient for travellers, travellers are more accepting of that. If it saves them time, if it gets them to their hotel quicker and into the restaurant or out enjoying themselves, I think when, um, when technology improves an experience or gives back time to travel, is that's when people are more accepting and I think we are in a new age and if you want convenience then that does come with um, with you know some 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 um, t some technolo technological um, elements and um, but in neon what we're hoping to, what we're in our plans is that a lot of those decisions will be put in the hands of the traveler so the traveler will make the decision as to how much data they share and again if we can show there's benefit to them by sharing more data with us then the, the opportunities that open up to them so there needs to, it's like, I guess we, we often talk about it as a give and take. If we ask, this, ask for this information, what is it that the client or the guest is going to get in exchange for that information? And um, for our operators, um, also the third party and providers. So when we're building out our digital ecosystem in Neon, we look at it through the lens of the, the operators, so the people who will deliver services to our travellers. Um, Neon, what's Neon hoping to get out of? And of course, most importantly, the guest. What does the guest get out of um, the, the technology platforms that we're developing? So we're always looking at those three lenses lenses um, for any of the solutions that we're, we're, we're planning to implement in NEOM and it's important that it, 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 it does give back to all of those providers if we're asking for information, how is it used, but the decision from a NEOM perspective will be in the hands of the traveller for, um, for how, how, they use that, how we use that information. So to, to kind of nicely wrap everything up and since we're talking about digital and future, what do you believe are the future trends? And I'll leave it to you for tourism and events and, and AI or whatever uh, scopes you want to discuss, uh, whoever wants to. Uh, I think from our, from my perspective, from a tourism perspective, it's all about personalization um, and using technology to personalize and give back time to travelers. So for us, they're the, the key things that we focus on is personalization and giving back time. Uh, I fully agree with that, uh, and it, it comes back to my previous talk saying that people are now active. So if people are active, it means that you have to treat them personally. You have to know how to treat, as your question said, that you're not going to treat uh, a customer coming from GCC in the same way that a customer coming from Japan. Like, it's two different cultures, and if you want to receive good feedback, because imagine, like, the first trees I'm going to the line, Neom would destroy like the line uh, on the social media, like it's, it's going to be a catastrophe. So that, that's why you have to personalize the experience. Uh, and I think it's a global trend, not only in digital, not only in tourism. Like today, everyone wants to be a single proper person, everyone. Uh, so you can see that on fashion, you can see that on unique care. experience unique experience so um i think the uniqueness and and, and the personalization are, are really a strong trend uh, that we are going through right now i fully agree i'm sorry i don't agree with you <laughs> <laughs> he's laughing at me uh, um, i changed my mind about that that's why no i think that the future of tourism is sustainability for sure okay we are not going to go to Barcelona the same way we are not going to go to Rome the same way maybe we are going to try to choose a night train instead of taking a plane you see what I mean and I think this touching all generation I have three kids 30 25 20 and they're all are focused on sustainability. That means they will find a place, a sustainable place, that proves that it's sustainable, etc., etc. I, I thought it was just something for hipsters, you know, but I changed my mind about it. I'm sure the future 
it's unstability. I'm sure about that. And I can see that, you know what? Bec because I have no opinion, I have only data. And I can see that a lot of, the number of questions on all the hotel we have about sustainability is rising, you know? That's why I changed my mind. Say, oh my God, there is something that happens now. And the question is, how can we be not more sustainable? Or can we be regenerative? You see regenerative? You see what I mean? It's more than just zero carbon, okay? It's really more than that, okay? I was not concerned about that. I'm more and more concerned about that because I'm able to read the data. Always the same. Okay. Data don't lie. Uh, if I may, I, I also agree with you. And on my field, I can, I can see also that now uh, most of our client is, is requesting some uh, sustainable action in the way we are building some experience. So fully agree. But once again, um, you can also be sustainable, but also by providing some personalized experience. Oh, yeah. And I think it, it, it's very complementary because once again, the way that Japanese people will see sustainability is gonna be very different from people from Africa or whatever. Uh, so, and if we want that sustainability works, we have to adapt the angle of sustainability we take uh, from the different culture that you want to address this, uh, this topic. Yeah, you know, Perik, if you all agree, it's not interesting for the audience, you know. <laughs> I'm and, a good guy. <laughs> and from Neom's perspective, so sustainability again is a given for us. Regenerative tourism is the baseline for us. So we're not working in a system that has legacy. We are, that's the starting point for us. So for you, it's very, yeah, very important because we're in the middle <laughs> of the desert, you have to prove three times that you are sustainable. Exactly, yeah. 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 Well, thank you uh, for this very interesting and fascinating panel, and I'm sure everyone here enjoyed it. it and thanks, it, it everyone. It was interesting. For, uh, very or uh, the most interactive. Okay. Most interactive. Thank you. Can you panel. applause very loud? Thank you. Thank you. Thank so. you. Okay. And thank you, everyone, for attending. I think we have our, our closing remarks, and um, thanks again. Thank you.